Greetings fellow sojourners. Uh, today's study of Judges, we're going to pick up with Judges chapter 7. Gideon defeats the Midianites. So this is a very interesting tale where uh, God intentionally reduced the numbers of those going into battle with Gideon so that God would get credit for victory. Early in the morning, Jerob Baal, which is Gideon's nickname, if you remember from chapter 6, he earned the nickname Gideon, or uh, um, Jerob Baal, as, you know, Baal shall tend to you himself, after Gideon tore down Baal's altar. So early in the morning, Gideon and all of his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands, in order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her. Announce now to the people, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many. Take them down to the water, and I will sift them for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, then he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred men lapped with their hands to their mouths, like this. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the three hundred, who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I'm going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Purah and listen to what they're saying. Afterwards, you'll be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Purah, his servant, went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand of the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the three hundred men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them, with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they changed the guard, which is basically after the enemy has gone to sleep. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hand and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow, they shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon! While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying as they fled. When the three hundred trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shita, towards Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Meholah, near Tabath. Israelites from Naphtali, Asher, and Al Manasseh were called out, and they pursued the Midianites. Gideonites sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they took the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Barah. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb. Oreb means raven, and Zeb means wolf. 
They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. So this is a wonderful, dramatic tale of the battle fought that, that God ensured that God would get credit because there was no way these 300 men were going to be able to take the Midianites. Ironically, there's so many elements at play here where you see the fear and panic that's already instilled in the people because of this dream that was had by a non-Israelite. So earlier in the Bible, we know that uh, Joseph interpreted dreams, and later we, uh, in Daniel, we know Daniel interpreted dreams. But here we have some non-Israelites who have a dream, this barley bread that comes down onto a Midianite tent and collapses the tent. And then this person recognizes this as symbolic that, uh, that Gideon is going to come and take the Midianite camp. So, you know, very interesting. But then that fear is there and the people panic and turn on one another, which is, you know, God at work. And we can take this story and apply it to our own lives, which is when we're in a situation where we feel like we can't possibly win, we need to remember that with God's help, we can win. And there are all sorts of factors that will come into play other than our own might and our own power. Uh, so always rely on God. Blessings. Bye.